D. What's up, YouTube? And today we had a translated pre patch notes of what we have to expect with the balance changes in Path of Exile coming up in Forsaken Masters. This was kind of kindly translated by Sister Shaniqua. Um, and we'll go ahead and read some of this and see uh, how it's going to impact the game, my thoughts, and so on. All right, so game features. We know that this was coming already. Added spectator mode for duels. You can enter with slash spectate name or right click someone in your friends list and choose spectate. The character you wish to spectate must be on your friends list and in the dueling area. You also need to have the level and quest requirements of the area. You can leave by entering slash town to return to your town. During spectator mode, you can use arrow keys to move your screen. That is what I was really wanting. I didn't want to just auto follow somebody. I wanted to actually look where I wanted to uh, view the arena. That's really cool. Continue to improve art, sound, special effects, and scenery design. Cool. All right, general balance. Strong boxes will randomly appear in raid class. These strong boxes are guarded by powerful monsters. When they're touched, these monsters will swarm the player. <clears throat> you can only open the box when you have slain all monsters guarding the strong box. Like items, strong boxes can be white, magic, rare, and unique. Players can also use their currencies to change the strong boxes, mods, and rarities. Prefixes on strong boxes affect the strength of the monsters, such as additional monsters, traps, or the hindrance to your character. Suffixes affect the rewards. Now, the prefixes that you do want are like rare packs or additional magic monsters. Those things will get you more rewards, essentially. Quivers are redesigned. Their properties are changed according to the arrow tips they have. That is really interesting. Redesigned. So they've already revamped qu quivers once, but I guess they weren't happy with it uh, again. Bows can now deal more damage. Additionally, some bows now have a higher base critical strike chance. This is huge because being a ranger and always having that 5% crit unless it's a harbinger takes the flavor out of the crit builds that you can do. Uh, what does this mean for items like Doomfletch? I would expect Doomfletch's base to go even higher than what it is. So it, it would probably be a better candidate for a COC early on as you level. Um, but yeah. I would imagine these would be retroactive changes to the bows that exist. Um, so look for a big change in the archery department of Path of Exile. All right, the base attack speed of early level weapons have been incre increased. So this seems like it would affect racing more than anything. And additionally, the bows deal more damage and have more crit may make them better contenders for early early start ranger uh, racing. Um, I'll have to talk with Terry, see what his ideas are and how it'll affect, but I, I, I'm guessing he said the rangers start to catch up you know, in speed and efficiency once they get to that lightning arrow LMP range in races. But if the race is shorter than that, it's like not worth a damn. You just got to go spectral throw. So this may br bring back what was supposed to be you know archery racing uh, maybe this will uh, supplement some of that spectral throw uh, muling higher level potions now require much more health than lower level ones additionally we've added two higher level potions at 65 and 70 this is insane of a change this is much this is like needed this isn't even op because you reach mana pools and life pools of, you know, in the thousands, like 5,000, 6,000. You can even get like to up to 8,000 easily with like Combs Heart and things like that. So having like a small Hallowed Flask seeding that gives you like 300 health back instantly, or, you know, it's just like a small few pixelated lines on your, on your health bar. Does it help? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but. This is a much needed balance because you're starting to get into these end game pools where these potions do very little other than the secondary effect like remove shock, remove uh, bleed, those kinds of features or remove curse. Added two new mana potions at 65 and 70. Uh, again, 
I don't think that mana potions were needed as so much because when you have a massive mana pool, you have the tendency to get uh, lots and lots of mana regen and to have that much mana and not enough mana regen is kind of silly. Also, slower mana potions, saturated ones where it reduces the rate at which it regenerates is actually a good thing when you run with auras because it reserves a certain amount of... Um, uh, of your mana pools so that you can not achieve that full mana status so you can essentially run on either a warding flask or a sprint flask or whatever you want to last you know the longest amount of time what does this mean in other terms mind over matter being able to replenish your, replenish if you say you have like 60 percent of your mana unreserved and you just want to go for you know maximum effective health with mind over matter this will help replenish that really quick if you take a spike of damage. But other than that, mana potions I don't think that are too necessary. Uh, shock status effect has been improved to 50% increased damage, but no longer stacks. Now, I love the way he worded this because it says shock status effect has been improved. <laughs> like, hey, we're buffing you. But also, ultimately, in the grand scheme of like arc, chain, lightning, you know things like that it is a nerf um, uh, upfront hits heavy hit heavy hitting um, you know uh, lightning skills there aren't really that many I mean uh, as far as a charge goes, maybe like a discharge or uh, maybe even storm call but even then most lightning skills have rapid succession lightning hits arc does the chain and it's just like monstrous, like chaining all over the map. You have ball lightning that ticks many, many times for small amounts. You have storm call that has multiple, you know, succession explosions. And then you have spark with fork and things like that. Those are all like small ones that get ramped up really quick with triple shock stack. Uh, this is a big change to PvP because temp things like Tempest Shield are going to get nerfed. Uh, Going into an attack based person with Tempest Shield with good block chance, it's so easy to triple shock stack you for full duration, like 9 seconds. It is ridiculous. So that should be less of a problem. Alright, skill gems and support gem balance. Duelist starting gem changed to double strike. Could also be dual strike, not clear from the translation. So... Okay. Um, maybe the first to Hillock. I don't know. I don't know. That doesn't. It's not that appealing to me. Shadows starting gem changed to Viper Strike. Oh man! So that's a nerf to Shadows killing uh, Hillock. The double strike. Hmm. That's very very interesting. Early rewards are changed. Who knows what that means? Probably, probably the uh, armor pieces or jewelry pieces that you get I don't know many many skills mana costs are reduced we all knew this was coming uh, Chris said that the resources were a bit intense with the amount of representation you were getting through Eldritch Battery and Clarity so those are big factors in why this is this came to be the way it is now I would see I would expect to see Elemental Hit receive the most reduction and after that maybe a little bit of dominating blow and archery skills I would imagine being reduced because both skills more often than not when you have more than a five link or, or five link or higher you end up just running it on blood magic and it very takes the it takes the flavor out of you know being able to run a bow skill on mana that's not cast on crit so I think this is a good inclination that we're gonna see some significant reduction in bow skills curse on hit now has a hundred percent chance to curse whoa I did not see this curse on hit now is a hundred percent chance to curse when you hit an enemy at level one it reduces the effect of the supported curse by 10 percent at level 20 it increases the effect of support curse by nine percent quality bonus stays the same so your elemental equilibrium builds with ice nova trap or self cast ice nova curse on hit things like that uh, it looks like it's going to get changed. Looks like for the for the better, being able to use a uh, cursed on hit in a four link sound now sounds much more uh, appealing. 
Uh, I would gladly take the cursed effectiveness reduction for 100% chance to apply it along with equilibrium. So equilibrium buffs uh, incoming. Clarity is nerfed. We don't know by how much. Can't really say anything about that. Arc is nerfed. It was warranted. There's no other. It's like arc or bust. I said that in my low life testing. I showed you guys how how much different it is compared to everything else and it was just miles ahead of the next thing flame blast is nerfed yes this is the build that i was planning on doing it says nerfed but even after nerf i would still run it even with the 25 percent uh damage penalty nerf um still going to be good proliferation burn if the burn gets affected then we're, we're looking at some doing something else but arc nerf flame blast nerf warranted I was able to do so much for so little with Flame Blast, and it was ridiculous. Ball Lightning is buffed. Thank God. I was I was asking for it, and I definitely think it needs it. If you are if you're going to be limiting yourself on how far you can go and how many times you can hit, you can't shotgun. It definitely needs to do more damage. How much of this is buffed? Who knows? Ice Spear is buffed, and Ice Spear is one of those niche uh, spells. It's just everybody who uses it uses it for like power charge on crit to get them power charges it's outside of that there hasn't really been a role it used to be a, a good way of freezing stuff uh bosses and stuff like that and prolifying that but it never really did significant damage so i'd expect ice spear to become you know up to par with other cold spells i'm surprised we don't see any other cold spells being buffed but that would go along the lines of mana costs that are reduced. I was I would expect to see significant changes to all the cold skills and their current mana costs. That would that would be at least how I would buff it. Anger is nerfed at higher levels. Wrath is nerfed at higher levels. This is really significant because that Ellie Spectral Throw, Ellie Buzzsaw, Nerf, Ellie Barrage, Wander Barrage, all these are super nerfed if that's the case. I mean they were able they were also one of the cost efficient builds because you your weapon were basically your auras and that's exactly what the build i'm doing right now is so this is quite a huge nerf spectral throw is nerfed uh we saw that they're changing the effectiveness with spectral throw and support gems this was warranted i feel like uh this is a good change and they'll still be great skills but they're not going to be so much greater than your number two ability. This is going to bring the Wanderer, the Barrager, the um, Archer, the Split Crit, you know, the whatever, whatever arrow. This is going to make them more competitive on a crit scheme. And hopefully they're at least it's at an even kill, you know, a relatively even kill and not such a huge separation because daggers daggers and spectral throw crit was just so insanely strong and they get the best mobility and they get a shield so uh, a bit warranted blocks chance re reduction support gem is nerfed by 10 percent block chance across all levels that is really huge and very very significant in pvp um it was like one of the most you have to have these uh this support gem on a swap in case you had to go up against anybody with a shield uh, this is definitely going to create some more balance because there was this new meta build we called it the mecha and he was unkillable because you know you couldn't dish any damage to him he had so much block and he was so tanky um, actually this is actually going to make him even tankier because you're going to have less penetration so I take that back uh, he's probably going to become Super Saiyan now. Uh, unkillable. With the exception of like stuff like traps and stuff. But he, has, he even has a lot of dodge. Okay. All curses have been nerfed. New nodes in the passive tree have been added to increase the effectiveness of curses. This is what I was talking about earlier. When we saw the first glance at the tree. That uh, perma curse and whatever the other stuff were in a wheel of nodes. And I was saying that... Since curses are going to get nerfed, they're going to allow witches and people that travel up north to regain their old curse back with, you know, spending talent points. 
So I saw this coming. Uh, it was definitely needed. Curses are so strong. Dual curse, perma curse, quad curse, all that shit. It's game breaking, it's build enabling, and it allows you to do many, many things. Now you're just going to have to pay for it a little bit more. It's going to come out at the expense of your passive tree. Alright, now we look at to the passive tree changes. Which, which is starting area is drastically changed. We saw that. Um, good shit to come, I'm, I'm assuming. Shadow starting area is partially changed. Now it roughly separates into physical and elemental. We saw the spell damage nodes now became elemental which are better than spell damage nodes because now this affects burn and it double dips so having elemental damage huge 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 allows you to go to attack base or spell and double dip between certain elements uh, the area near which shadow and ranger have been changed notables and keystones have been moved outwards um, we kinda saw that through the teaser of the screenshot we had we added notables to small clusters outside the starting areas. That's good. It's always good to have a wheel that ends up in nothing, but at least has a notable, like a mini miniature, uh, major node. And I think that was definitely warranted. It sucks to travel someplace to lead to nowhere. One example of the things that I hate is this. This wheel goes eight 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 eight, and it just le leaves you hanging. It's like not much reward but if you're going this this way and your life base it's it's a pretty smart wheel to tack into but i definitely would like to see like flavor come out of those um try wheels or whatever bug fix fix the bug when the ui becomes abnormal when accepting and declining multiple trade requests simultaneously yes this was a very very annoying bug that i've constantly dealt with i'm glad that it's resolved thank you so much uh, Sister Shaniqua for translating this. Uh, I think you did a really good job, much better job than the original post. Um, we'll have more updates when we get them from Chris or GGG. I'll look forward to sharing my thoughts with uh, with them, uh, with you guys. And if you like this video, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. Tell your friends, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.